welcome. This is Start Using PHP 7, um, Oscar. You can follow me on Twitter, Omarita. Um, if you have questions afterwards, if you don't get a chance to chat. Um, the, I've already posted the slides online, so if you want to follow along at home, um, you can go to this link, phpa.me slash oem dash use dash php7. Um, um, in this presentation, we're going to look at why you should migrate to PHP 7 if you haven't already or you're considering it. Um, some of the new features in the language, uh, some of the changes that were made that uh, required a version bump, and also some tools to help you uh, plan a, a, a migration of any code base um, from 5 to 7. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, just uh, you know, raise your hand and interrupt me. I'd rather handle them. In the, in, during the presentation before we move on, um, if there's anything that's unclear or you, you need a clarification on. All right, so the first big reason <laughs> you should migrate to PHP 7. Uh, first of all, show of hands, who's um, on PHP 5 still? Okay. Um, anyone using a version older than 5.6 that you know? Anyone using PHP 4 still? No? Okay. Who's, who's moved to some sites to 7 already, PHP 7? Cool. All right, well, PHP 5.6 is end of life. Uh, active support for 5.6 ended in January of this year, on January 19th. Um, it's worth noting the last significant version of PHP 5 came out in August of 2014, almost three years ago. Um, PHP 5.6 will still get security fixes from the core team through the end of this year. Um, you mean the end of next year? That was the end of next year. Yeah. So you have some run, some more time, but it's better not to procrastinate. Um, obviously, if you have an older application or clients with one, use a proactive approach to migrate. Don't wait until something breaks, something is hacked, and, and then blame it on uh, not upgrading as, as the cause. Um, there are vulnerabilities in PHP. So cvedetails.com lists 555 vulnerabilities for PHP. Uh, this includes seven. Um, a lot of them affected both seven and five. So this doesn't mean that PHP seven is vulnerability free or that five is riddled with them. It just means the core team is not fixing vulnerabilities in uh, versions prior to five, six. And five, six is only gonna get another year and a half of support. So after this, and after that window ends, they're only going to fix PHP 7. Originally, I think it was going to be, they were going to end support much earlier, but then they extended it since so many um, five, six sites, or five sites are still in production. Uh, of course, um, your Linux, assume you're on Linux, uh, your distributions may backport fixes to older versions, and a Red Hat will do that for really critical bugs. So you may have a little more time depending. Um, but really, there's a lot of compelling reasons to uh, move to PHP 7 if you haven't already. First of all, it uses a lot less memory. A significant amount of work went into optimizing how the Zen engine manages memory. So the Zen engine is the name given to the PHP interpreter. Uh, it was created um, when PHP 4 was released by Zeeb Sarasky and Andy Gutmans, and they just kind of uh, merged their names together. Um, and created Zend. That's also the, co the company they started to offer mm -hmm. support. Uh, so some of the things they did is packed and immutable arrays consume less memory. And what those are, packed arrays are arrays with numeric indexes that are already sorted. So there's some optimizations so that those are handled. Use much less memory when they're being manipulated. Um, immutable arrays are arrays which contain pretty much scalar values, integers, floats, booleans, um, things that aren't going to change like dynamically like a class or object um, or or they're nested with immutable arrays they also work a lot on reference handling and making it smarter so the way that variables point to essentially buckets in memory space is a lot smarter um, as a result it uses a lot less cpu um, the main benefit and the main reason PHP 7 is so much faster, it has to perform a lot less, fewer memory operations, like allocating it and tracking it. Um, they also did some stuff like optimize how variables and strings are interpolated so that that's more performant. If you really want the details of that, the Blackfire IO blog has a series, a uh, five part series going into each of these and looking at the real you know, guts and internals of it all. So PHP 7 is less resource intensive. 
which means less memory and CPU means you can use uh, fewer and less powerful servers for the, uh, the same application. Uh, as this can be a powerful argument to make to your CTO or, or your managers on why you should invest time in upgrading uh, your stack. What does this translate to? There's been some benchmarks. Zend uh, provided an in infographic showing the improvements they measured. Uh, the Drupal ones showed going from 182 to 316 requests per second when they upgraded from 5 to 7. Um, Drupal 8 went from 32 to 55. Um, Rasmus Lerdorf, he's the original creator of PHP. He works at Etsy. He did a bunch of talks and with a lot of benchmarks in them for measuring performance improvements. On his hardware, he saw Drupal 8 go from 1,400 to almost 2,600 requests per second. WordPress similarly went from 270 to 604. So the actual numbers aren't as important as the change in them, right? You can see that uh, in some cases, you're nearly doubling uh, the performance of the application just by upgrading the code, the PHP interpreter that it's running. There are case studies also in production improvements. Badu.com estimated that switching to PHP 7 saved them a million dollars. They're a social discovery network. Um, they reduced, they saw reductions in response time by 40%. Overall load on their clusters fell 50% and they saw memory usage reduced by a factor of eight. So the, where they got their $1 million figure from is the cost savings re resulting from eliminating 400 servers, which is half of their machines. So they could get by with much less hardware. Similarly, Dailymotion uh, is a video serving site. Um, they used, uh, they upgraded PHP 7 and, and their takeaway was like, now we can handle twice more traffic with the same infrastructure. So it's about the same factor of two. They used Etsy Fan to identify incompatibilities, which is a tool I'll uh, look at a little bit more later. Um, according to them, it took them less than a week to migrate their code base, a week of effort, and that included some time ded dedicated to upgrading um, some custom extensions that they had for running their site. So not a huge time sink if you, know, you have the resources to send it out at them. So what are some new language features? Let's look at those. Uh, scalar type hints were introduced in PHP 7. This was a huge uh, request, long-standing request um, a lot of programmers wanted. PHP 5 already had type hints for arrays, callables, classes, and interfaces. Um, scalar type hints add them for scalar values, so integers, strings, floats, booleans. Um, and what they help to do is remove boilerplate code that you'd have to t include in your, in your methods um, manually before. So you can see to do that in our in that first function get record we're expecting the ID parameter to be an int uh, and the second one we're expecting two strings to be sent to our concat names function. This um, is a lot of stuff you used to have to document in a doc block before and then in PHP 5 there was nothing like ensuring that calling code was sending you the correct uh, type of parameter, so you had to do a lot of defensive programming. So before you could actually do anything, you'd have to check, like, well, is this really an integer? Is this re really a float? How do I handle it if they send me an array or something and, and all that stuff? What the scalar type hints will do is there's two modes. Um, there's a strict mode, which will force enforce them uh, and throw an error if the calling code does not send, does not use the correct type of parameters. So that's what that declare strict types equal one line does, and you put that at the beginning of the line. So it's important to understand, and I found this really confusing, that it's not the library creator. Like, I can't make people, if I create a component or a class or a library, I can't make people use the strict type hints mode. You know, if you choose to do that, um, you can get a lot of benefits, but there's nothing that you know, the Symphony folks or the Drupal folks can do in their code that makes your module or your class or your script have to um, use the strict mode. The strict mode, what it'll do, it'll throw exceptions. If, if you try to pass an integer uh, to a string, um, it'll just say, look, I'm expecting a string, you're trying to send me an integer, go figure out what's going on. Um, 
By default, in the, in, in the, the lazier mode, or friendlier mode, uh, the Zen engine will convert it automatically for you. It's called, uh, they'll do type coercion. Um, so if you're expecting an it and someone sends you a float, it'll try to, it'll chop off the decimals for you. If you're sending an int in the function expects a string, it'll convert that integer to a string behind the scenes for you. Um, and that's, again, for int, bool, string, float. Those are also now reserved words. I know a couple class pack, um, symphony, I think, packages had an integer class, and they had to rename stuff, and some other ones. If you have mm -hmm. a class called string, if, if you upgrade to PHP 7, that's going to throw an error because that's now a reserved word. Whoops. What do we mean by coercing values? This is the chart of how it tries to convert stuff. So remember, if you're in strict mode, it's just going to error out. In the coercive mode, if you send a string and the thing expected a bool, then it'll convert it. So an empty string would be false. A string with something would be true. If you try to send a float to an item that, uh, a parameter that should be an int, it'll be cast to an integer. It'll just chop off whatever's after the decimal and so on. Coupled with scalar type hints, you can also have return type hints. PHP 5 did not have these at all. Um, and this just lets you specify what the function will return. So in this case, our get record function is going to return some object that is a person record. Or our concat names function is going to return another string. In strict mode, if your function doesn't return that, it'll error out. Um, if it's in the more in the coercive mode, then it'll, if it can, it'll coerce the scalar value. So if, if you return an int in, in your function, but you said you're going to return a string, it'll get converted automatically. This also means that if you're using like an IDE like PHP Storm, it'll highlight those errors for you. So like you did all these calculations, your your method signature says you're going to return a string, but you're returning an int. Or, you know, it might put like the red squiggles or something underneath them, so that you can fix that before committing it. Another big change, and this is a little more um, important if you're writing your own framework or, or doing a lot of error handling yourself, um, they reorganize how engine errors are thrown in the engine. Um, and they, instead of just triggering an error or a warning or, some, or, or just causing a fatal error, it will now uh, in most cases, I think there are a few edge cases um, where, the, where that couldn't be converted, but 99% of things will throw an actual exception that you can ca catch and handle more um, elegantly than just throwing up a white screen of death at people. Uh, even parse errors will throw a parse exception. The one change is in order to rearrange the stack of like the hierarchy of errors, they introduced a throwable class and then everything else, exceptions and errors, extend that class. So if in your code you want to handle all the errors, you have to catch a throwable, not catch an exception. Um, we also got a bunch of new operators. There's the spaceship operator. Everyone know where it gets its name from? <laughs> kind of looks like Darth Vader's TIE fighter. Um, and what that, the, the spaceship operator lets you compare two values and it will return negative 1, 0, or 1, depending on you know greater than, equal to, or less than. Um, their use case is pretty much for uh, sorting stuff. If you're running custom sorting functions, this makes them a lot less, um, it makes them more concise, easier to read. Uh, another one that's probably more, of more practical use is the null coalesce operator, which is two question marks. That's not me asking anything about what it is. Um, and in, this makes it a lot easier to, to write. You know, instead of checking it, if is empty username, then set a value, otherwise set it to username, like with the tertiary operator. Uh, you can just, or a comparison, you can just do name equals username. If that's empty, it'll assign what's to the right of the two question marks. Otherwise, so it keeps whatever's on the left if it's not empty. So it's a lot easier to read and write for default values when you're checking off your post arrays or get arrays for or stuff, any sort of user input. A big change was uniform variable syntax. And if you do a lot of object-oriented programming or, or working with arrays, which you know, if you 
could and at all with Drupal, you'll run into like hugely nested arrays and objects. Um, PHP 5 had some odd rules about how it would like parse, the order would parse a big sequence expression like that. PHP 7 is much stricter in that it just parses stuff from left to right. That's why it's called uniform variable uh, syntax. Um, so in this case, if we had an array with two called field with two keys, name, and value, and then we use that array to dynamically access some property of the node variable. Notice that there's a dollar sign that's in front of the field there. So in PHP 5, it would evaluate that field value part first. That's why the brackets are in my comment to highlight that. So it would say, okay, well, field value is target ID, so I'm really trying to access the target ID property of this node variable. And if it exists, it carries on its merry way. PHP 7 goes from left to right, so it says, okay, there's a node object, it's got some dollar sign field. If dollar sign field were, were a string, it would work. In this case, it's an array, and it errors out because it's, it's parsing that node arrow field first before it looks at the bracket value parts of it. Um, so these are real tricky, they can be hard to find. Luckily there are tools that can highlight them for you, which we'll see in a sec. There's a bunch of other changes and these are coming with the newer branches. For example, PHP 7.1 uh, introduces nullable types and void return types. So you can, if you use type hints and you pass the null to when you're expecting the string, in PHP 7 it would error out. If that's an optional parameter, you can put a question mark in front of the type and it says this can be a string or a null or nothing. Similarly with returns, um, this might return a string or it might return nothing. There's a lot of debate whether it's good practice to do that. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna say all if you're gonna say you're gonna return a string, you know, some pragmatists or purists would say then always return a string. Um, whereas other people, you know, want a little more flexibility. Um, PHP 7.2, the big change in that is libsodium support. It adds a modern cryptography uh, library directly into the core. It's going to be bundled. It's going to be enabled. The aim is to provide high quality crypto functions. Cryptography is a whole other talk in and of itself. Um, in my experience, it, it's just something that it's easy to do wrong and it's much uh, better. You, you never roll your own cryptography, cryptography. If you take one thing away from my talk, that should be it. Um, besides upgrade to PHP 7. But um, this bakes in, you know, vetted really good functions that are hard to mess up directly into PHP. And 7.2 is in beta now, so it should be released in, in a couple months at the most. Of course, oh, um, there was some removed functionality in PHP 7 um, that caused backward uh, compatibility breaks. A lot of stuff that was marked deprecated in PHP 5 is gone altogether, so that's why we went from 5 to that's why we had to have a new version. There's a whole other reason why we went from 5 to 7 instead of 5 to 6. Um, there's a whole RFC if you want the nitty gritty details of what was removed. And that's a link if you download the slides. Um, or you can go to the RFC website for PHP and search for it. The biggest one is the MySQL extension. The old MySQL extension uh, is gone. That means all those MySQL underscore query, MySQL underscore connection uh, functions are just don't even work in PHP 7 anymore. They've thrown de deprecated notices for a while now, so if you have any old legacy code that's not Drupal that used them, you should have seen them, you should have moved it uh, already. You can use PDO and prepared statements. PDO is great because it can connect to all sorts of databases without a lot of, um, you yeah, having to rewrite any of the connections handling stuff. As long as you're writing portable SQL, even better. Um, there's also the MySQL I extension. It's an option. It's very similar to the MySQL underscore family of functions. It even has a procedural um, interface that you can work with, or if you want to work with objects, it's got an OO way to do that stuff too. Um, does anyone still have an app using the MySQL underscore stuff? Options. Yeah. Okay. okay. So a lot of other minor <laughs> stuff was removed. Um, so this is kind of like trivia. 
ASP and script tags are no longer supported. So before, in addition to the bracket question mark way to indicate that a new PHP block was starting, you could do ASP style bracket percent or like actual script language equal PHP. I don't think I've ever seen those in production code in like the last 10, 15 years at the most. Something that's a little more frequent, the ereg underscore regular expressions, that, that extension has been removed. It's been throwing deprecated notices for a while. You can use the pereg functions uh, for the same functionality. You will have to write the syntax a little differently. Uh, the old magic quotes functionality is gone. There's some PHP INI settings that were removed, uh, like uh, icon V and MB string related. So if you do a lot of internationalization stuff, uh, converting between character sets, you might get bitten by that change. Um, as a security precaution, the pereg replace function can no longer run stuff through the eval. Eval is kind of evil and a security hole anyway. Um, instead, there's a pereg replace callback uh, function that you should be using. So a lot of these things were removed either for security or just like they're so, so rarely used that the cost to maintain them isn't worth it. And, you know, because any bit that they can remove is something less that might cause bugs and that some form maintainer has to ensure works with each new version. Um, along with removing stuff, there is some stuff that's now marked as deprecated, so you should um, develop with e-deprecated and e-notices on to see and fix those errors. Uh, it includes stuff like the old PHP 4 style constructors. So does anyone still work, remember working with these PHP 4 constructors? Um, before we had the underscore underscore construct function, the way you defined your constructor in a class was you had a function with the same name as your class. So if you had a class called node, you'd have a function with the name node, and that's what the PHP engine would use. And this PHP 5 still supports that as long as your class is not in a namespace. Um, and, and that's still like a weird inconsistency. It doesn't make much sense to keep it going forward. You know, modernize your code, just use underscore underscore construct from now on. Uh, if you make a static call to a non-static method before PHP let you do that, now it's going to uh, throw a deprecation uh, warning. Um, if you need to call a non-static method, you need to create an object for it. For it. Uh, the mcrypt extension, um, and I know a lot of online tutorials, especially the really older ones, use mcrypt for creating like unique IDs or even passwords or some other stuff. That's deprecated. It hasn't been updated in like years and years, so it's not really supported even by the old Crypt maintainers. There's a full list of features, of deprecated features in PHP 7 at that link. You can download the slides. That's on php.net. So this is what will stop working if and when PHP 8 is released, although I don't know of any firm type table that they're working for and a release. Any questions on the new deprecated or removed functionality? Strict type hints. Anyone excited by strict type hints? <laughs> cool. They're pretty useful, I think. Um, so how do we prepare to migrate our, our code base? Obviously, you can test your site. That's the best way to do it. Um, you'll need to identify code which needs to be updated. You're not going to want to do this manually, necessarily. But ideally, you have a test suite to check for failures. So if you're writing a lot of classes, hopefully you wrote unit tests for that. Um, what I find more useful with my Drupal websites is our VHAT feature tests. So any critical path, someplace that's selling something, taking donations, surveying users, input, that sort of stuff, write a VHAT test that can step through it and make sure that it works. Uh, if you don't already have a test suite, this is a great time to invest in one, and I know there's been some good VHAT talks here uh, to see. Um, Obviously, I can't cover every little change that might come up. Read the migration guide. PHPNet has one for migrating from 5.6 to 7. There's one from going to 7 to 7, 1, 7, 2. It lists all the backward compatibility changes, change the new functions. It'll also detail what extension and SAPIs were removed. Um, this is the canonical reference with all, the, all of them. You should read it before you update your site. Be familiar with it. And hopefully, a lot of them will be familiar after this talk. The good news is Drupal Core Drupal 8 is fully tested and compatible with PHP 7. In fact, Drupal 
eight was an important test bed for finding bugs and backward compatibility, unintended backward compatibility changes when seven was uh, being tested. They were both released very uh, close to each other um, in the fall of 2016. Um, Drupal 7, uh, it does support PHP 7. Uh, there are tickets open for D7. I don't think any of the incompatible changes are, are like actual showstoppers. Um, but you want to make sure you're using at least 7.5 for core. 7.5.0. 7.50, sorry. Um, when we get to contrib, it's a little harder to guarantee that all modules will work with PHP 7. Um, but because of the efforts to maintain backwards compatibility, most modules should work with little or no changes. Uh, I mean, many might throw into new deprecation notices. I was really surprised a couple months ago, I finally said, well, I need to upgrade my Drupal 7 site to run on PHP 7. And I was only bitten by one error, and that was in the web form module. And there was already a patch for it, so I was running a slightly older version of it. Um, backup and migrate, I, I just updated because it's throwing the deprecation notices about PHP 4 style constructors. And I've actually been chatting with some folks here and I haven't heard any horror stories uh, of like this module just couldn't be upgraded. There wasn't already a fix in the issue queue or whatever. Obviously, if a, a module is not very popular, it's not, not even actively maintained, your mileage may vary, but the big ones I think have, in my experience, all uh, worked to resolve any issues. I mentioned Etsy fan. Uh, there's a cool suite of tools called static analyzers. They can automatically scan your code base and find code which needs to be upgraded. They do way more than this. I, one of my slides was gonna be like, I'll just run Etsy fan on my Drupal 7 site and show the errors. And it just yelled at me about undeclared functions that I was calling and the wrong parameter order. So it, it wasn't worth it. Um, but all of these have tests for PHP 7 and 5 compatibility, so they'll look for those, you know, you have this really long you know, variable syntax expression that will break or might break or that needs attention, or you're using the MySQL query functions here, the, these, these are gone, that sort of stuff. They'll give you a nice report. Nice report. Etsy fan is, is pretty popular. It, Etsy employs Rasmus Lerdorf, he's the creator of PHP 4 um, and 3, actually. So, you know, that's... a Good, good lineage. Exacat is another one. It has compatibility tests too. Um, it has a few more dependencies uh, for like Gremlin and Neo4j because I think it does some graph stuff that you can output. Um, there's a blog post uh, by my friend Matthew, <coughs> preparing legacy applications for PHT 7 with fans. So if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this, he walks you through what you need to install, what kind of, how you configure um, Etsy to look for the backward compatibility tests and, and uh, report all that stuff. There's also another one called Monk, Monk U, PHP migration, and it will scan for back as 5.3. So if you're on really old code base, that might be a better tool to look at. And obviously, pre-built env environments are a great way, easy way to test stuff. Anyone not using Vagrant, Docker, Drupal VM, you're not using any of them? Have you? At home, I have them. Okay. Okay. We can't install things. Locally. Right. You're familiar with them. Yeah. Sure. Um, so any one of these gives you a great way to spin up a server. And, and you know, if, you, if your main stuff is on 5, you can bring up a layer, uh, Drupal VM box with 7.1, point your Drupal directory in there, load your database, and see what breaks, write tests, run your test suite against that. Um, Drupal VM is great if you have a lot of dependencies like Solar and anything else in the kitchen sink, Jeff's got it in there. Um, I like Homestead, it comes from Laravel, um, but it's it's already pre-baked. It's really easy to get set up because it's already provisioned. So you download their box and you don't have to wait for it to like install Apache, install PHP and do all that sort of stuff that's already installed. Um, you just need to focus on loading your database and mounting your directories. If you're using Docker, um, there are images, official images um, for 7, 7, 1, and 7, 2 that are pretty easy to work with too, once if you're more, more familiar with Docker. Are you using Homestead for Drupal or just for Laravel? I, I use, um, I don't do any Laravel in that work, not out of like any philosophical difference. I use it for a Drupal client where um, I need to, this is like, 
prototypical, not in a prototypical plant, but the guys who, he's, he's not a dev and he doesn't have a staging site or a dev site or a kit or anything. I needed a environment real quick. Um, and Homestead was literally like 10 minutes to download the box and mount the directories and um, load my database, Drupal database into it. Um, I've used Drupal VM too. Um, it feels a lot heavier to me and I don't need all that all the Ansible scripts that Jeff has that you can configure in there. But if you're already using Drupal VM or, or you do have like Solar replacing your search and you don't want to go through the hassle of figuring out how to provision that in something, that's a great tool. Do you use any of these or? Mostly Drupal VM. Mm -hmm. I've used Homestead for spinning up like a Laravel VM before I hadn't tried putting yeah. Drupal on it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically just a LAMP box. So anything you <clears throat> can run on any Linux Apache server you can use with Homestead. Um, a word on distributions with PHP 7. Debian Stable has, now has PHP 7 uh, in, in their repos. If you're on an older version of Debian, uh, you can use the .deb.org repos for older releases uh, to get 7 installed. Ubuntu 16.04, LTS is PHP 7. Uh, both Red Hat and CentOS have older versions, so you have to rely, at least from what I can tell, and the one CentOS that I know of, I work with, you have to use a third-party repo uh, to bring in 7 to, to... This is more for like when you're getting ready to deploy to staging or production, you need to update those guys. Because if you just want to test locally on a dev box, use Laravel or Google VM It'll make your life a lot easier. Cool. All right. So in conclusion, PHP 7 brings massive performance gains and improvements to the language that will help you write better code. There's really no reason to stay on PHP 5. Um, you should, if you haven't already, you should start planning <laughs> and asking for resources to do it. And even tell them that's it only took them a week, so how long could it take for a Drupal? I still know some people running Drupal 6. Wow. That's the only one reason to stay with PHP. <laughs> it's not a good reason, well, but yeah. yeah. It might not break that much. Because I don't work for them anymore, it's the yeah. like Department of Education. Like, yeah. they have a lot of clients, you know, that on legacy sites and they need to migrate, so the projects are coming up. It will be an interesting case to hear if, if how hard it is to... I'm yeah. going to ask, is there right now an initiative on Drupal.org to, um, I guess like the best approach if you've got contrib modules that you're using, we're going to move to Drupal 8, um, you would patch it yourself and then provide them the patch or whatever the case may be. But is there any Drupal.org sort of initiatives to say all future code should be written in such a way that it's compatible with PHP 7? I, I mean, I know maybe that's not a question I should be asking you. Sure, I haven't. I didn't see anything, and I think for eight, the the minimum version is still five six. Sure. Um, maybe when they go to eight. It didn't work on five six for me. No. Yeah. Like my my size was actually in my. Um, Post package. I have a, you know, just personally, I have a post package with network solutions, and I switched the version to PHP seven, and some of my sites went haywire on the legacy side. Oh. Drupal eight sites were fine, but when I was on five point six, Drupal eight wouldn't install properly. Huh. So, it works. yeah, there's so some. Nice. I found out how to yeah. assign it to each profile now. I think eight o might have been five six, but maybe eight whatever the latest is. Yeah, Symphony has. Drop five six support, so probably as a result, I think four drop had to drop it. I'm just moving forward to seven. Yeah. I haven't seen any guidelines. I don't know if the coder module yells about that or it indicates any backward compatibility yeah, I mean, stuff. I guess that's the reason why I brought it up is because if it's going to become mm -hmm. antiquated, it'd be odd to um, continue to let people on Drupal that are blindly develop as if they were developing for five six. Sure. Uh, well, but there, so maybe that's more of a group discussion. But there I are things kind of yeah. like the legacy development is going on in its own name, and then Drupal 8 is moving forward. And if you're running a Drupal 7 site, the, the underlying assumption is that you know, like you got to determine your end of service and you know get migrated over. 
That's true when you talk about the non practice, because look, you got triple six hanging around. Yeah. Oh, well, so. Well, yeah. that, that's, you missed the boat. You better. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree <laughs> with that. But it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard sometimes for yeah. people to hang along. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have very skilled developers, they can still maintain it themselves. They're just branching, mm -hmm. you know, and they're not, they're not really yeah. supported. Yeah, at some point, though, you're maintaining more and more, right? Yeah, you're gonna, and it gets and the, the cost gets high. At some point, if you're on Red Hat, or on um, Debbie and I had a really old server, I couldn't update it to, s they didn't, there was no path forward with the server itself. So at some point, I had to migrate the server to a newer version of PHP. It would have been a pain to backport, upgrade the server and then backport. The data migration is so much easier than, you know. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. so, well, thanks for coming to my talk. Again, on, on Twitter, I'm Omar. You will take questions sec. Let me get through my... <laughs> Can you slide with the, yeah. to the slides? Okay. If you don't know me, I publish PHP Architect. It's a monthly magazine for PHP developers. I have some cool print copies if anyone wants to check us out. Um, you can also go to phpr.com if you join our mailing list. You'll get a coupon code to check out a di digital if issue for free. We also have a fall conference in Tyson's PHP World is focused on PHP stuff. We have Drupal-related talks, Symphony, and all the rest. Where are you based out of? I'm, I'm based out of Fairfax. Is it Tyson's? Yeah. It's, it's at the Sheraton in Tyson's, right on the Silver Line. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Yeah, in Maryland, you might as well just like either move over there or run out of the Yeah. I've been going there. Thanks again.